Well, Rigel is a... Uh... He's a whole mixed bag of things, really. I like my wives pregnant and my ships cold to the touch. That way my feet stay warm and my slumber is uninterrupted. Wives plural? Mm. Big fella. <laughs> He's a bit, little bit idle because all his predecessors were uh, rulers of the country and were really involved in, in the, uh, the running of the planet and the running of the, of the government. Um, but as, uh, as the years have gone by, so... Uh, the job's got a little softer and, and easier, and he's got more and more people to do things for him, and, and so he's really kind of sat back on his laurels and, and, and indulged himself. I was just dreaming about my final mating session when I was just stating Goliath to say that she needed some exercise. I think he's a very, very self-indulgent character. We, Rigel the Sixteenth, Dominar of the Hynerian Empire, and... Uh, Beloved sovereign of over 600 billion subjects, welcome to our yacht. But he's been imprisoned uh, by the peacekeepers um, at the behest of his brother, one of his brothers, um, who's a, also a bit of a nasty character, but we never get to see him. Um, so he's been in prison for 250 years, supposedly. Um, and that's made him a little bit recalcitrant, I guess, and a little bit miserable and um, all, all the more so self-important and pompous and arrogant. And... Don't you know this is an act of war? When my council hears of this, the Hynerian Navy will scorch this hellhole. <sighs> that should get him thinking. One of the things that I think uh, as, as actors they, they have difficulty with is the fact that he's supposed to be a king and he's supposed to be a ruler, um, and yet because he's very small, he's like a baby. So there is this, there's a duality to him. You're, you're, you kind of want to treat him like a small, frail thing, but actually he's not at all. He's, he's very tough. He's got very sharp teeth, and uh, he's got a really bad temper. A bit like a baby, I guess. Here, Aaron. Here. What's wrong? We need to take off immediately. The ship is collapsing and Pilot is refusing to follow my commands. Dan, we've run out of time. We need to remove the device right now. If you do it, you do it without me. But you're the only one small enough. Come on. <laughs> Wait outside. Please. Let me. Your greatest fear will come to pass, Hynerian. Someday you will die at the hands of a peacekeeper. As though you'll get the chance before we're all crushed. He's, uh, he's got a load of stuff in his face. He's got uh, cables in his lips, so he's got, a, he's got a full mouth range here. My hand is actually inside the head, so we've got like a jaw movement. But this... this malleability that human beings have to form shapes that's operated on a, a, a cable control system and then his uh, eyebrows and his blinks and his, his breers which are always like his ear things um, they're all uh, servo controlled electronically controlled by another puppeteer We can program his face to do quite specific things so that he can be very, very angry and very thoughtful and he can look very bright and, and very uh, uh, awake and alive and sparky. Um, actually, he's not sparky very often. Pretty much most of the time, he's just annoyed <laughs> and angry with people. If this is about me climbing around on the ship's entrails, then you can simply turn around and go back the way you came. With permission, Your Eminence. Yes. Quite often what will happen with the puppet is a performer will do the voice in studio and then afterwards they might post-sync it with a, a completely different voice. They'll just look at it and decide what's, what's the, the best road to go. Oh, yes. Physically, my hand's inside the puppet. Uh, David is doing eyes and uh, the Bria eyebrows and the blinks on the left to right. So I have to coordinate with him where we're going to be looking at any particular time and what the expression's going to be. So we have to be quite specific about that. Then, at any other 
given point, we might have another two or three people involved, uh, one person for each hand, um, if he's doing quite a complex sequence of movements. Um, sometimes we'll put one person into little tight skins because he's got these really small hands. So uh, we have to bend the puppeteer's finger like that and jam his hands into this little foam glove, um, which means that he can eat and he can pick very delicate things up. And then we've got mechanical hands, what we call short arms, um, which have all the dexterity that a human hand has, minus the little finger. Usually on a puppet show all the sets are raised and the actors will work um, standing up and are normally below what you would consider to be floor level. Um, on Farscape, uh, just the nature of the show is there's a, a, a lot of big action sequences, a lot of running around and a lot of stunts and the sets are all on the floor so sometimes it is quite difficult to, to get the puppets and all the puppeteers in to very small spaces. There was a time you'd have been disemboweled with the dull edge of a Lashland spade for half such an insult to me. He said, concussing the puppeteer behind you. <laughs> we use a variety of techniques. Sometimes we'll simply just frame out a puppeteer so that you, you just don't see them off the edge of camera or, be or below the edge of camera. And then we use lots of optical techniques from very simple green screen um, where they just put a, a green cloth in front of anything that they, they don't want you to see. And then they do what's called a, a, a plate which basically fills in that green screen that you're seeing so that you don't see anything behind you, you don't see any of the puppeteers. And then all kinds of clever CGI, computer-generated effects. But those are very expensive. They like to do it simply if they can. You know, you only expose your ignorance if you don't concede knowledge of the Hurlian Stone. Twenty barrels of fluid. There was a time when you would have been disemboweled with a dull lesson spade for half such an insult to me. Thirty-five. You don't have to be physically fit. You just have to have access to a lot of Panadol. Um, <laughs> really, that's all it comes down to. You're always in, always in uncomfortable positions. And in fact, we just have an adage that actually, if you if you're comfortable, then you're not doing it properly. Um, so. Sadly, that's just the way it is with puppets, but you have to have it's stamina more than anything, more than strength, I think. The puppet, um, the hand puppet, is actually quite heavy. The head alone weighs about six kilos, so it, it can get quite uncomfortable. When he's riding around on his throne sled, uh, Graham's on this uh, pole arm that we've got, um, which is, uh, well, it's just like it sounds, it's a, it's a long arm on a fixed axis so it can rise and fall and Rigel sits on this little bucket seat at the end of it and then we do a process called green screen so that we can lose that and it makes it look like he's hovering about so there's another person on the other end operating that so there's five or six people at any one time operating him. There he is then. No, 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 what, what were you doing out here? I was relieving myself. Rigel, did you see anyone? No, no one. One moment I was was yeah, relieving yourself in the next. And the next, boom! I've suffered many assassination attempts on Hyneria, but... Nobody knows you here. It's only people who know you who want to kill you. Um, and then there's a, a stunt Rigel, uh, which is just like a little dummy version, because the other, the other versions are very expensive, and the, the stunt version is not so expensive. Uh, only, the spot, only the price of a small car as opposed to the price of a house. Take this royal pain out of my sight. <laughs> and we can kick him about and throw him about. I'm on a super permanent. John, what is it? This is going to take a lot of explaining. They do it in private. He's definitely not for kids. I think he's, yeah, he's a little bit too scary. I thought they'll be suckered into him, I think that's the thing. I think a lot of children will start watching Farscape as, as children see everything now, everything, anything that's good on television, kids get to see it. And uh, 
they take bootleg videos to school, don't they? So, but they'll uh, they'll start watching him and they'll, they'll think he's cutesy, and they'll, then they'll get a shock. Listen for a weird, strange noise, something out of the ordinary. Hmm, weird noise. Does my stomach count? <laughs> No, that's not funny. That's not funny, Rigel. Look, I gotta get out of here before I end up like you. What, well, handsome with a great sexual prowess? <laughs> shut up! Just shut up! No! I gotta get out of here. Mm. You either help me, help me. Mm? <laughs> Leave me alone! I'll be in the galley with the food. I'm the monster. <laughs>